Moving our bodies is often purposeful, like for dance, fitness, and even daily functions. But for the approximately one million Americans living with Parkinson's disease, the conflict against the body's own will to move can be a lifelong challenge. Today, understanding movement symptoms of Parkinson's disease, dyskinesia, and off episodes. I'm Erica Vetrini on location in Daytona Beach. Access Health starts now. Parkinson's disease, or PD, is a chronic progressive neurological disorder characterized by low levels of the neurotransmitter dopamine. In PD, eventually the brain cannot make enough dopamine to control movement properly, and motor symptoms often start to appear. Access Health recently caught up with Dr. Salima Brillman, a board-certified neurologist and movement disorder specialist. Dr. Brillman has been working with PD patients for over 15 years. There are no two people that are exactly the same with their Parkinson's symptoms. There are generalities, of course, um, criteria, if you will. The cardinal features of Parkinson's for the motor symptoms are rigidity, slowness, which we call bradykinesia, postural instability, also known as imbalance, and tremor or shakiness. The motor symptoms of Parkinson's can be very challenging for a person with Parkinson's. They can affect their day-to-day -day lives, such as eating, getting dressed, their social lives, as well as their jobs. Statistically, most people diagnosed with Parkinson's are aged 60 years or older. However, an estimated 5 to 10% of people with PD are diagnosed before the age of 50. It also affects 50% more men than women. Lee was diagnosed with PD at the age of 41 and hid his symptoms from his job and friends for many years. After becoming a widower, Lee reconnected with Sherry and the rest was history. They've invited me to spend time with them today. Well, thank you guys for having you are me. So welcome. I hear that you two, hey buddy, I hear you guys are practically newlyweds. We are, oh, yeah. in fact, yes. We've been married three and a half years now. But you knew each other for a little bit longer, right? Yes, 20 years or so. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, I appreciate you for letting me spend the day with you. Um, Lee, I, I, I want to talk about your Parkinson's. I understand that you were diagnosed at a, a very young age. And I, I couldn't believe it when I first got diagnosed with Parkinson's. I just couldn't accept it, I guess. And so I was in denial for quite a while. And Sherry, 20 years ago, you had no idea. Not a clue. He was perfect. No, no one on the board or in the club thought he had any problems at all. But then as your relationship progressed, I'm sure that there were signs and there were changes. Yeah. There were changes. Definitely. Well, we have a lot to talk about. Sure we, do. we do. We do. We do. Let's go inside. Let's do it. Have a you seat. You too, bud. Are you going to come? Come on. Coming up, more with Lee and Sherry. Parkinson's disease is a lifelong chronic illness with many different stages. While there is no cure, treatment of PD focuses primarily on symptom management, such as occupational therapies, physical therapy, and medications. We're very lucky in this day and age of Parkinson's because we have many tools in our armamentarium to treat the symptoms of Parkinson's. While we don't know what causes Parkinson's, we do know that the fundamental reason why people have their motor symptoms is a decrease in a neurochemical called dopamine. So in order to help treat the motor symptoms of Parkinson's, we treat it with medications that increase dopamine. And one of those is the gold standard called levodopa. As time progresses, people with Parkinson's may start to have what we call off periods or off episodes. Off episodes occur when a person has utilized their levodopa, but with time there are changes and the efficacy of the levodopa isn't the way it was when they first started taking the medication. When people with Parkinson's begin to experience off episodes, they often are concerned and scared 
because they don't know what's going on and they may even think that their disease is progressing. I really encourage you at that point to contact your healthcare provider to see what they can do to help you through that. We want people to be able to do their activities of daily living to the best that they want to be and can be. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Look at that feast. Yes. So Sherry, outside we were talking about the early days. Tell me about what you saw. In the early days, I was surprised when I saw him and knew he had Parkinson's. And I would notice if we were going to a restaurant, sometimes he would have trouble going through the door. He would stop, which later I learned that tends to be something with Parkinson's. But it was like, wow, this, you know, he's doing really well. So then Lee, how were you managing it during those early years? Managing it through physical fitness. Uh, I would go to the gym three times a week and then uh, run marathons and that kind of thing. So I, I did all kinds of crazy things, but I was able to do it because mm -hmm. my levodopa levels were, 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 were right. Uh, and so, and that was enough at the time? At the time it was, yes. Mm -hmm. So then when did things start to change? Changed by um, I needed a, a stronger dose of levodopa. Mm -hmm. How did you know when, when you say it, it, it no longer worked, what was happening? The off time was a little longer than the normal. And so then what did that feel like for you? I feel very um, tentative. You, you feel a little bit of um, like nothing's working. And so Sherry, what were you seeing during these off episodes? I was seeing a, a mood change rather than the Mr. Go With The Flow fun guy. He would get real quiet or he would get have not much patience, which was definitely not like him. And so I knew something was going on. So wasn't there a particular incident that you remember? The one time was when we were in church. He started like moving all around in the pew. And then afterwards we went to lunch with a friend and I had not noticed this, not being able to sit still. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't as much just movement, it was also facial expression. Mm. This was new? Very new, very new. And were you, did you recognize that? Did you know you were doing this? I, don't, I didn't even notice that I was doing that because I, I didn't know. I thought that I was being normal. So when did you finally decide to take action and to, to make the decision to seek help or more help? Oh, well, it was shortly after that. It's, it's, um, I decided that I needed, I needed help. I needed something different. We had received an, uh, a notice uh, that his former doctor was having a seminar. And that day he was really bad. And we're sitting at a table and he's doing all of his movement thing. When his former doctor came over and said, what is going on with you, man? I've never seen you this bad. You need to come in to my office first thing Monday morning. And we did. And the doctor confirmed that Lee was having dyskinesia. And that was the turning point. Many people with off episodes also have what's called dyskinesia. Dyskinesia are these involuntary dance-like movements that people can get when utilizing levodopa for a long period of time. They can affect the head, the mouth, the torso, the shoulders, the arms, the legs. It's very specific for each person. It's not uncommon that people with Parkinson's may confuse their dyskinesia for tremor remembering that tremor is a common symptom of Parkinson's, whereas dyskinesia is a side effect to levodopa therapy. They are different. Coming up, how Lee faces his challenges with Parkinson's head on. For patients living with Parkinson's disease, levodopa can offer valuable relief from symptoms. However, as we've been learning, extended use over time often comes with a series of risks. So you get the diagnosis, you have dyskinesia. How was it like living with it? It was very tough uh, because uh, dyskinesia, is, it, you lose control of your body. Mm -hmm. And it, it does all kinds of crazy things that, that, uh, that it's moving around so much. And, and then um, I, just, I just lost faith in, in the 
the fact that I, can't, I couldn't play the same level of sports that I was used to. I mean, it's such a big deal for you, too. It was a big deal for me, yeah. So ironically, it was the very drug that was helping you yes. control the yes. movement that was now kind of spinning you out of control. Yeah, that's true. Because um, it was a drug that was so, that worked well in the beginning, but then as my body began to recognize it, when it didn't do this job anymore. And Sherry, socially, how was it affecting you? At that point, it was so bad we weren't sleeping. And Lee was thinking I was always getting on, picking on him. And so it, it was tough. And how did you find help? I contacted my doctor and, and asked him if there was anything new on the market that, that could help me. He said there was something coming out. So you have just sort of faith in him? Yeah. Dyskinesia can be quite distressing and impactful for people with Parkinson's. It can affect their balance. It can affect their ability to swallow, to eat, to dress. It can be very embarrassing for them to be out in public. So these things affect a person's happiness and their quality of life. And I think it, it behooves us to treat these symptoms for these people with Parkinson's to make them have the best quality of life that they can have. Coming up, treatment options and management strategies to help with dyskinesia and off episodes. While Parkinson's can pose plenty of challenges for patients, not all of them come from the disease. Dyskinesia is the excessive uncontrollable movements caused by extended use of levodopa, ironically the very drug that patients take in order to help control their movements. Oftentimes, it becomes a balancing act between off episodes and dyskinesia. And the way in which we used to treat it was a problem. It was a conundrum for us because if we decreased the levodopa, the off episodes would get worse. But if we increased the levodopa, the dyskinesia would get worse. We're very lucky now in this day and age because we have ways to treat both the off episode and the dyskinesias. I recommend Gocovery in my patients that have off episodes or dyskinesia or both. Gocovery amantadine extended release capsules is a prescription medicine used for the treatment of dyskinesia, sudden uncontrolled movements in people with Parkinson's disease who are treated with levodopa therapy or levodopa with other medicines that increase the effects of dopamine in the brain, and also with levodopa and carbidopa in people with Parkinson's disease who are having off episodes. It is not known if Gocovery is safe and effective in children. Do not take Gocovery if you have severe kidney problems. Gocovery may cause serious side effects, including falling asleep during normal activities, suicidal thoughts or actions and depression, hallucinations, feeling dizzy, faint, or lightheaded, especially when you stand up, orthostatic hypotension, and unusual urges. Other serious or common side effects include dry mouth, swelling of legs and feet, constipation, and falls. You're ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm We're ready. We're really playing golf, aren't we? Yes, we are. Oh boy, I'm not much of a golf relay. You I'm don't not. have to be. Okay, you say so, but I, I did get some shoes to fit in. That, that, they look very colorful. <laughs> Any excuse to shop, right, Jerry? Right, I love the shoes. Me too. I mean, Lee, from the looks of your golf game, you've clearly figured something out. What did your doctor and you determine was a good plan to reduce your dyskinesia? I determined that I should start a drug called Gocovery, which reduces dyskinesia and also uh, up here that I, that I usually get. 
And, and Sherry, how is it going from your perspective? It's, it's really going great. With the dyskinesia reduced and the fewer off episodes, he feels better. He can play nine holes of golf, and it, it's very good. We had one thing that we found that tended to make his legs swell slightly, but we got those special socks, and he's doing great. And it's different, really, with everyone, but that, you know, that was our experience. Are you good? I'm doing fine, I think. It's, it's, um, it's given me the, the chance to do some of the things that I haven't done for a long time. That is so good to hear. Honestly, thank you so much for sharing your experience. It's going to help so many patients that are out there with questions. I'm sure that it will, and I, I, I'm just so grateful for the time with you. Well, thank we've you. enjoyed it, too. Thank you for letting thank us share. Much. With less dyskinesia and more good on time, feel better balanced. Of course, this has been my experience with Go Recovery. Yours may be different. Talk to your doctor about treatment regimen that's right for you. Parkinson's disease research has progressed enormously in recent years, and I hope you found our information helpful today. For more about GoCovery, please see full patient prescribing information at gocovery.com, or as always, go to our website, accesshealth.tv. See you next time. What is GoCovery? GoCovery, amantadine extended release capsules, is a prescription medicine used for the treatment of dyskinesia, sudden uncontrolled movements, in people with Parkinson's disease who are treated with levodopa therapy or levodopa therapy with other medicines that increase the effects of dopamine in the brain, and also used with levodopa and carbidopa in people with Parkinson's disease who are having off episodes. It is not known if Gocovery is safe and effective in children. Important safety information. Do not take Gocovery if you have severe kidney problems. What should I avoid while taking Gocovery? Do not stop or change the dose of Gocovery before talking with your doctor. Call your healthcare provider if you have symptoms of withdrawal such as fever, confusion, or severe muscle stiffness. Do not drink alcohol while taking Gocovery, as it can increase your chances of serious side effects. Do not drive, operate machinery, or do other dangerous activities until you know how Gocovery affects you. If you took too much Gocovery, call your doctor or go to the nearest hospital emergency room right away. What are the possible side effects of Gocovery? Falling asleep during normal activities. Activities may include driving, talking, or eating. You may fall asleep without being drowsy or warning suicidal thoughts or actions and depression. Tell your doctor if you have new or sudden changes in mood, behaviors, thoughts, or feelings, including thoughts about hurting yourself or ending your life. Hallucinations. The recovery can cause or worsen hallucinations, seeing or hearing things that are not real, or psychotic behavior. Feeling dizzy, faint or lightheaded, especially when you stand up, orthostatic hypotension. Lightheadedness or fainting may happen when getting up too quickly after long periods of time, when first starting recovery, or if your dose has been increased. Unusual urges. Examples include gambling, sexual urges, spending money, binge eating, and the inability to control them. The most common side effects of recovery include dry mouth, swelling of legs and feet, constipation, and falls. If you or your family notices that you are developing any new, unusual, or sudden changes in behavior or related symptoms, tell your healthcare provider right away. These are not all the possible side effects of recovery. Call your doctor for medical advice about side effects. You may report side effects to the FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088. Tell your doctor about all medical conditions, including if you have kidney problems, have unexpected or unpredictable sleepiness, sleep disorders, or currently take medication to help you sleep or make you drowsy, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed. Recovery may harm your unborn baby and can pass into your breast milk. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take. Include prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, and herbal supplements. Especially tell your doctor if you take medicines like sodium bicarbonate or have had or are planning to have a live flu vaccination nasal spray. You can receive the flu vaccination shot, but should not get a live flu vaccine while taking recovery. 
please see full patient prescribing information at www.gocovery.com.